Welcome to the R video tutorial on agent based models part eight. This time we're going to fix the bug we had in our last code. It was really simple fix. Uh, and then we're going to change some other things to add another state to this. Right now we only have people that are in the susceptible exposed and we got people to move to the recovered state. Now let's go back down to our code. We'll find out where the problem was. And the problem was is these braces. I wasn't paying close enough attention to the braces and what was enclosed. So all I need to do is take this bit here of code and move it to here. That's where it belongs. Belongs at each time. If you look at the loop here, this is for time. This is for each person. So I don't have to grab each and every person every time. Because in this case, I'm just pulling everybody out at once. So I don't have to loop through them. This pulls it out as a vector and a vector and a vector. And um, R is very good at, at vectorized arguments. And if I just take this right here, what we've done, and run this, I added down here at the bottom out one so I would see the output. I can see I had people become exposed for... And then down at the bottom, 14 days later, they've moved over to the recovered. And I could change this to any number that I wanted okay, along the way. But this gives me this information about how, if moving between states here. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to take those who've been exposed and I want to randomly assign them to whether or not they become sick, the infected group. So I want to add this other group. And I can do this pretty easily. All I need to do is grab the people who are, their agent is E, and I need to grab the time they've been exposed. And I'm going to say they have to be exposed more than, let's say, three days. So I need to grab those people. So I'm going to do state E3. I'm going to do exactly the same as I did here, except that I'm going to change the number to three. And for these people, they will have a chance at becoming sick or not. Okay, so it's that's not that they will become sick. There's a, going to be a random chance that they will become sick. Okay, so we have to be a little bit careful about this. So we're going to do for, let's see, I guess we can use I again. Uh, in our loop here because our outer loop is K for I in we could just do state E3 okay and the reason we can do that is this has a list of all the numbers that I want to iterate through okay so then what I can do is I can say for the people who meet this criteria um, and they remember they have to be uh, exposed and have been longer than three uh, the time they've been exposed, we'll make a urand1 like we did before, which is going to be runif101. And yes, there are other ways you can vectorize this as well, but right now I'm just trying to purposely go through and make these things uh, a little bit longer. Okay, so we're going to have... And show you how to use, you know, if statements and, and whatnot. So urand1 is less than our infection rate. Let's say every day, every time Kennedy comes by, they have a 0.2 probability of becoming infected. And this is a parameter that we'll want to add. And then for this particular person that, that I'm working through, then the state, I don't, not the agent, but the agent one dollar sign state for the ith person now will switch to infected okay so this is going to randomly assign people to become infected now this net doesn't ever allow them out of this state at the moment okay we will have that later but it doesn't allow those out of it so what did we do we put in here grab those grab those who could become sick. Okay, then we loop through them and randomly assign whether they get sick or not. Okay. And 
maybe on the next one we'll we'll vectorize this to make this a little bit clearer. But here we're going to grab them, and then we're going to determine whether they get sick or not. All right, let's see if this works. So control A, run, and what did I end up with? I end up with people in the infected bin. Notice here I have people in the infected bin. So some of the exposed people moved over. Okay, notice that how how much the people go from the susceptible to the exposed. They're moving over quick. And then I have people moving over to the recovered bin. Uh, well, I, nobody moved to the recovered bin because my probability here is probably too high. If I change this to maybe 0.1, people will probably make it to the recovered bin because it's much less likely that they would get hit here. Okay, so now I have people in the recovered bin, I have people in the sick bin, I have people in the exposed bin, and I have people in the susceptible bin, Almost, but almost nobody's left in the susceptible bin out of the 100 that I have. All right, so now we've seen how to make this work. Now we got to figure out how to get people to move out of the infected into the recovered. All right, and we'll cover that in the next video.